Hi, Phil Constantine here. Travels with Phil at the Jet Propulsion Lab. Here very early in the morning to take the uh, tour of the facilities out here. I came up from San Diego, didn't know what the uh, traffic was going to be like, so I left very early, got here two hours in advance. So get to see a little bit of sunrise there in the background. So we'll be having the tour starting soon. But before we start, let me tell you about it. The JPL is located just north of Los Angeles in the city of Pasadena, California. I actually live in Pasadena, Texas. But uh, this is what it looks like. Now, since Explorer 1 in 1958, the JPL has taken part in more space missions than any other place around. It started around the 1930s. They were doing work at Caltech and started blowing up things. So they figured, well, we better get out in the wilderness rather than being here by the college. So they set up this spot here. They first started the name around the 1930s for Jet Propulsion Lab because they were doing work on jets and engines. Then they did the Explorer 1, the first U.S. satellite. In the 60s, they began developing robot uh, spacecraft that went to all kinds of planets. And eventually, every single planet in the solar system was explored by JPL robotic surveyors. They've had them to Mercury, Venus, Mars, uh, Mariner, uh, Voyager, Viking, uh, the 10 was the first one to do a gravity assist uh, uh, takeoff or moving from one planet to the other, using the gravity of one planet to help it go faster and in a different direction. Uh, they've worked in all kinds of things. Uh, the Voyager went to all of the planets and then is still going on, actually, and that started in the 70s. Had a bunch of other ones out there. They had developed the deep space network with all kinds of satellite dishes out there. We'll show you some pictures of those. Cassini Huygens went out to Saturn. Uh, the surveyors uh, have uh, gone up. Uh, Mars rovers, a wide variety of the rovers out there over the years uh, all came through this facility here. In fact, you're seeing the one of the rooms right there in the background. And they have about 20 different spacecraft engaged in uh, major projects going on at the present time. So we're gonna take a, a tour. So on with the tours. We're walking through the campus here. It's a fairly large facility. You can take public tours through here. I was real lucky. I did this uh, to a, a gift for myself for my 70th birthday. And so I got into one of the uh, tours here and came through the facility. And it does take a couple of months in advance notice usually to be able to get into the tours because you don't have so many people that are allowed to go through them. And so they take you in here to one of the major parts where they do the public lectures. So we come into the public lecture here and they show a movie in here and they also show uh, examples of what the different spacecraft look like. And you're taken on a tour by people who actually work there at JPL. So you're going to uh, see them and hear from them here in this part of the tour coming up here. A little hard to get the recording but uh, you'll be able to hear it. All right, folks, good morning. Uh, welcome to JPL. If you didn't catch it outside, my name is Curtis. We have uh, Nikki in the back here getting the video set up for us. We also have Brian outside to help check everybody in. Uh, we're the tour guide for today, so welcome to JPL. And today, our main job uh, is we are uh, the lead robotic center for the exploration of solar system and beyond. So we build robots, we send all the planets, we check them all uh, out, and officially here at JPL, we'd like to humble brag to actually send a robotic spacecraft to every single one of the traditional planets, and I use traditional because we can mm -hmm. include the little that, right? We've all, we'll either orbited, landed, studied up close to every single one of the planets, and we're very proud of that because we're the only institution in the entire world so far that has been able to do that so far. If you guys have been hearing about robots on Mars driving around and exploring on the surface of Mars for the last 20 years or more, then you've probably been hearing about our rovers. Uh, either sojourner, or spirit, or opportunity, maybe curiosity, or even perseverance. That's the newest one that landed about a year and a half ago. All of those rovers were designed, assembled, and built built right here at JPL. This is the backup of the Pioneer, or I'm sorry, Explorer 1. So again, this is the backup equipment for the Explorer 1, which was America's first satellite. Discovered the Van Allen radiation belt. All right, let's go ahead and join us this way. This is the museum. This is located right next to the public lecture hall and the place where they show the movies that we were just in. And so they have a wide variety of different uh, models, mock-ups, and in some cases, some original pieces here for the various equipment that uh, JPL and other associated NASA, Langley, uh, Caltech, other organizations have worked with uh, JPL to send into space. 
and they have sent them all over the solar system and out past the solar system now with the uh, Voyagers going out further. And so these are just some of the informational material that you're going to be able to see as you come through the museum. It's pretty nice. And they even have some live feeds here if there are live missions going on at the time. So you can see them while being in the museum at the same time. So back out onto the campus and we're heading over to the spacecraft assembly facility, which is they actually put them together. Right now we're going to get ready to go into this building where they're building our spacecraft. In order for us to get there, we have to go up those flight of stairs down a long hall right past people's offices. So a reminder, please uh, turn to the right now. All right, this is the viewing room in the spacecraft assembly facility, and so this is where you can actually watch them putting the stuff together, assembling all the various parts and testing them out to make sure they're going to work properly. It's a nice little booth. All right, so I'm going to kind of hang out in the middle here, so hopefully, hopefully uh, both sides of the room can uh, hear equally. You can keep looking out that way. It's much more interesting to watch them than watch me. Um, uh, uh, before I get started, a couple uh, requests. We are in a confined space. If you talk, it makes it difficult for other people. Um, so if you do talk, just keep it in a whisper voice. It makes it easier. If you have a question, please sit until the end. I'll try to answer as much as I can at the very end. Lastly, if um, you can try to avoid putting your hands or faces on the windows, we want to leave them nice and clean so everybody takes beautiful pictures. Now, um, uh, the other thing too is if they happen to see you wave to them, they like when people acknowledge them. <laughs> now, this building we're in, um, this is actually called our spacecraft assembly facility. And like it says, that's what we do. This is where we take the smaller pieces that have been built in other areas. We take them all together, put them together, make a whole big giant spacecraft. Um, this room we're looking at, we call this high bay number one. And like it implies, there's other high bays here in our facility. In fact, there's another high bay just on the other side of this building. Um, but high bay number one happens to be the oldest, um, the largest, and most likely the most famous of all of our high bays here at JPL. Um, this room is a special kind of laboratory where we regulate the temperature, the humidity, and most importantly, the amount of particulates that are in the air here um, that potentially could contaminate our spacecraft. Um, this room is where we've actually assembled both the Voyagers, you guys remember, uh, we talked about in the beginning. Uh, the rovers we've been talking about since the beginning, all of them have been assembled here. Spirit, Opportunity, Curiosity, Sojourner, uh, even Perseverance. Um, in fact, if you guys look on the back wall, you might notice there's mission emblems all along the back. Do you guys see those? They represent all the different missions assembled here in this very facility, right? Either in this room or the sister room right next door. Now, currently, they're working on a new thing called the Europa Clipper. That's what you see in front of you. Uh, but before I talk about the, the spacecraft, I want to talk about the room and the people. If you look near the center of the room, you might notice there's a guy there taking a picture. And he hasn't moved since we came in. Do you guys see him? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually not a real person. That's High Bay Bob. He's a resident mannequin. Um, he's actually been working here longer than I have, and I've been here since 97. So, um, but he's here because sometimes we come in and no one's working, and they want to give you an idea of the way people would be dressed. You can see the emblems for the various missions up there on the back wall. This is some of the actual text there. Uh, connecting something to the overhead crane gantry system so they can lift it up, move it over to the spot where they're working on it. They have a wide variety of equipment out here, so they move the equipment back and forth to wherever they need to do their testing. And that's the actual Europa Clipper test module, and uh, they are doing the work on there. That was where the guys were waving at us, or the one guy was waving at us. And so you can see lots of different spots out here. They sometimes are working on more than one project at a time, different teams in there. But the major project now is the Europa Clipper, which is going to the moon Europa. This is what it looked like. These are those high bay doors, and they're actually bringing in uh, the Europa Clipper components to do the testing there. And very heavy, they pick it up and lift it and move it over. And they're able to clamp it down or tilt it over. Hey, I mentioned, take a good look before you come in. Uh, that was actually a National Historic Landmark plaque. Everybody mm -hmm. happened to notice that, hopefully? <laughs> yes. If you did, um, that celebrates the fact that this building, and more specifically the room you're looking at, is this National Historic Landmark. Um, that's because this room uh, that you're looking at, the Mission Control Center, that's been running 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, since they cut the ribbon way back in 1964. So this room has been running nonstop. Um, there's always been people here at the tennis. The, the, those are the things that actually send and receive the signals, right? If you look at the very far left screen, you'll notice there's a picture of our antenna. You guys see it? Mm -hmm. So that's a, the biggest of the antennas we use. You notice it mentions it's a 70 meter antenna. That refers to the diameter, how wide it is. So that's wider than a football field, almost as long. That's basically so big, you could almost play football off, uh, on it without falling off the edges. That's how big it is, right? Now, 
uh, those kinds of antennas, we call those directional antennas. Um, if you look at my little antenna right here on my radio, this is called a whip antenna. Uh -huh. and the, the, the spacecraft made it all the way to Moon. It took 4,000 images and everything. Uh, when people are trying to figure out, well, how come the first six fails? Why did the seventh one work? They couldn't figure out why it would, what the difference was. Why did it work? They actually reviewed everything. They came away from the review uh, thinking that, you know, everything looks exactly the same. The only thing they could point to, the first six, they didn't share peanuts. It failed. On the seventh, they shared peanuts. It worked. It must be the peanuts, right? So ever since then, it's been a tradition for us whenever we launch this. This is our very last stop. We're on our way to the exit. Before we go, I just want to think, uh, mention a few things. The first off, if you guys notice that light show right there, because that's related to what we, just, what we were just talking about. Um, in the center of the column, you'll see the name of the spacecraft we're talking to. Any lights coming from the top down represent signals we're receiving. Any lights coming from the bottom going up represent what we're send sending. We like to say this is a, a, a artistic representation of the communication we just talked about up there. Right? This is the same thing as those waving lights we were seeing with antennas, except this is a pretty artistic version. And in case you're wondering why do we have this, well, one of our um, mandates here at JPL, one of our jobs, is to inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers and, and uh, folks to join us here at JPL, to inspire uh, the youth of America to join now, us. We're supposed to act like a scientist on the surface of Mars. It has a robotic arm just like yours. There's a shoulder here, there's an elbow, there's a wrist. Right where your hand is, there's a bunch of different experiments. The most famous problem you guys heard about is a drill right there. It's taking core samples of materials on the surface that might point towards ancient life on the surface of Mars. We're collecting that material, we're hoping to bring it back to the Earth so we can actually see it in our laboratories here. So it's putting into like a little uh, test tube and it's going to cache it and hopefully we're going to bring that back within the next decade. And you can see the helicopter here. This came from one of the most recent Mars rovers where they literally will move it up and down, fly it around, and take photos. So if you like space, you're going to really enjoy going out to the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, California, just north of Los Angeles. Highly recommend it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please feel free to make comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And if you like this video, please click on the thumbs up button below. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the circle with my picture in it in the lower right hand corner of the video. The arrow is pointing at it now. And once you have subscribed, you can be notified of when I have a new video posted by clicking on the bell icon in the description field below the video. Thanks again for watching.